Every morning in the outback, Ned the little wombat usually wakes up to the sound of his alarm clock ringing, ready to see what surprise the new day will bring. But this particular day, Ned wasn't woken by his alarm clock. That's funny. Something was making a very strange noise. Hello? Who's there? Uh, hello? Mitzi? <gasps> oh, wow! <gasps> a balloon! The balloon looked like a piece of pure sunshine. Ned didn't know where it had come from or how it got there. But he knew one thing. I don't know who this belongs to, but it's mine now. Frank, Buster, look what I found. Isn't it great? I woke up and there was this donk, donk, donk outside. When I came out to look, there it was. Oh, it's lovely, Ned. Yes, it is. And maybe we should put some notices up around town, see if anyone's lost it. Oh, no, it's mine. Find us keepers. That's the rule. You know, Ned, I'm not sure if finders keepers is really fair. Oh, what a brilliant balloon. It's like, like a little bit of sunshine on a string. Can I hold it, Ned? No, Mitzi. Sorry, it's mine. Oh, don't be a spoil sport. Let me. No. Oh, all right then. Ha -ha! Leave it alone, Mitzi. It's mine. That's not fair. Born and all, got a little mail for you here. Thanks, George. Oh, fine-looking balloon you got there, Ned. Had one just like it myself when I was a nipper. Let's have a little look-see. Sorry, George. I found it, so I'm the only one who can play with it. Oh. Well, I would have looked after it. We know you would have, George. Ned's just being mean. Uh, <clears throat> um, how about a nice cold lemonade while you're here, George? Don't mind if I do. Thanks. Mitzi? No, thanks. I've got things to do. <clears throat> 23, 24, 25. Phew. Ah, oh, it's a beauty. Mitzi! Oh, come on, Ned. I was only looking. What are you doing? I'm going to put my balloon in a safe place. Oh. Thanks for the lemonade, <sighs> Frank. Mitzi, are you all right? Ned won't let me even touch his balloon. It's not fair. I know how you feel. I think maybe Ned's just worried that you might let the balloon go by accident and it would get lost. But I said I'd be careful, and so did George. Besides, friends should share things with each other. That night, before he went to bed, Ned made sure that his balloon was safe. He was planning to have lots of fun with it in the morning. Night-night. <sighs> Ned. It's gone! My lovely balloon! It's gone! Did you take it, Mitzi? Me? What would I want with your silly old balloon? Well, I know you wanted it. I didn't want it. I wanted you to share it. Good day. Oh, come in, George. Do you know what happened to it, George? Um, what happened to what? Ned's lost his balloon, George. Oh, sorry to hear that, Ned, but, uh, I haven't seen it. Then there's only one other explanation. Mm. There must be a gang of balloon thieves in the area. I don't think balloon stealing is very common, Ned. Why don't we come over to your caravan? Maybe we can work out what happened. Good idea, Frank. Ned, was this window open last night? Oh, yeah. I always sleep better with the window open. You know what? I don't think anyone took your balloon, Ned. I think it got caught by a breeze and blown out through here. Well, did you find it? Nah, 
It's gone. Forever. Don't give up just yet, Ned. Frank will think of something. Uh, we could always organise a search. Really? Would you do that? Of course. We are here to help. I don't see why George and me should help, actually. Ned never shared the balloon with us when he had it. Mitzi? Ah. Uh, all right, then. Right. Buster and I'll take the plane up and see if we can spot the balloon from the air. George and Mitzi, you could help Ned search around here. Right. right. Let's go, Buster. Give us a wave if you find anything. So, where do we start? Mitzi, I'm sorry I didn't let you play with my balloon. Ah, oh, that's all right, Ned. And don't worry, we'll find it. Uh, two, uh, three. Uh, oh, hello there. You haven't seen hey, a balloon uh, around uh, here, uh, have you, Archie? Uh, it's gold, and it looks like a... Uh, well, it looks like a... Uh, like a great big bit of sunshine. Only on a string. Hmm. Uh, oh, well, you know, now you come to mention it, I did see something gold-ish out of the corner of my eye. That'll be it. Where? Um, at the waterhole, up in the old tree. The waterhole? What are we waiting for? Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Archie. Ah, Wait for uh, me. One, two... In the sky above, Frank and Buster weren't having any luck searching for Ned's balloon. I can't see it anywhere. Me neither. Hey, looks like the others are heading for the waterhole. You're right. Let's go down and see what's happening. Ah, uh, fellas, over here. I think I've spotted it. Yes, that's it. You found it, George. <clears throat> here, let me try. Uh, oh. George, can you get it? Me? Oh, I don't know. I'll, I'll try. Uh, oh, oh, there you go, Ned. <laughs> George? Oh, 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 Come on, George. Oh, <laughs> you. Nice going, Ned. Hey, that was fun. Yeah, it's the best fun I've had since I found it. Maybe we should all share the bal balloon. Found it. Your balloon. Oh. Oh, thanks, Ned. I love my balloon. But this balloon isn't yours anymore. It's mine. Sammy gave it to Josie yesterday for all her hard work in the shop. But it slipped out of my hand and blew away. This is definitely the one Josie lost, Ned. But I found it, so it's mine. Finders keepers. Oh. Uh, Ned, what about Josie? What am I going to do? I don't want Josie to be sad, but I love this balloon so much. You know, Ned, there is one thing that would solve this problem. Sharing? You might find that you have more fun that way. But suppose Josie won't share with me, like, like I wouldn't share with Mitzi and George. Why don't you ask her? And that's exactly what Ned did. Josie, would you like to share the balloon with me? Definitely. Ooh. <laughs> well done, Ned. So everyone spent the rest of the day at the waterhole, playing with their special balloon. And thanks to the Koala brothers, Ned realised that by sharing things, he can have much more fun with his friends. Archie the Crocodile was an excitable sort of chap. In fact, he sometimes got so excited that he exaggerated things, and that could lead to trouble. Morning, Mr Ned. Hello, Archie. I say, uh, what's that you have there, huh? I'm growing a pumpkin. Buster's showing me how. Splendid. Morning, Archie. Morning, Buster. Hello, Frank. Morning, Archie. Gosh, Ned. It's even bigger today. Yeah, twice as big as it was yesterday. I don't know what all the fuss is about. It's only a pumpkin. Yeah, but have you ever seen one this big before? Mm. What's your secret, Ned? I, uh, water it every day. Ah, uh, it's not just that, Ned. You talk to it. Hmm. Yeah, it's good soil that makes them grow big. Oh, it works for my pumpkin anyway. 
You're growing a pumpkin too, Archie. I didn't know that. And it's a big one, is it? Huge! Oh, good soil makes good pumpkins. And good pumpkins make good pumpkin pie. I love pumpkin pie. Me too. Lovely. You'll have lots from your giant pumpkin. So I will. In fact, I'm making some pies today. I'll bring one over for your supper this very night. Wow. Are you sure you'll have enough? With a pumpkin as big as mine, there'll be plenty. Yeah, pumpkin pie. Mm. Well, I'd better get going. I have a lot to do. Bye. Bye. Archie was looking forward to harvesting his lovely big pumpkin, but when he got home, he found it was a lot smaller than he remembered. Oh. In fact, it was very small indeed. Far too small for a feast at the Koala Brothers' oh. homestead. Oh, no. He decided to ask Alice for a special recipe. Bye, Archie. Good luck. Bye, Alice. Archie was worried. His pumpkin was too small for Alice's recipe. Maybe Sammy would be able to help. Oh Meanwhile, back at the homestead, Frank and Buster were enjoying a peaceful afternoon. Nice of Archie to cook us supper. Very nice, isn't it, Ned? Yes, I suppose so. What's wrong, Ned? I'd like to cook pumpkin pie for you. No worries. You can do it next time. Yes, we love pumpkin pie. Uh -huh. We can eat it every week. <sighs> uh, more lemonade, anyone? Please. <sighs> Hello, Sammy. Josie. Hi. Oh, hi, Archie. What can I get you? Um, four eggs. Oh, no. No, make that two eggs. Yes. Uh, two bags of sugar. Oh, uh, no. Uh, no, I think one will do. Here, let me help. Pumpkin pie, eh? This looks good. Uh, four eggs, please, Josie. Uh, two bags of sugar. Uh -huh. Gosh, Archie, this is going to be a big pie. Are you having a party? Party? What party? Who's having a party? Can I come? Archie's cooking pumpkin pie. Oh, that party. I know all about that. He's grown a huge pumpkin and he's cooking it for everyone at the homestead. Is that right? You've grown a pumpkin? It's this big, isn't it, Archie? Uh, <laughs> Archie had done it again. He just got so excited, he couldn't help himself. Wow, that is big. I think you'll need six eggs and three bags of sugar. That'll make lots of pie. Sammy, you and Josie should come to supper too. There'll be plenty, um, won't there, Archie? I, uh, uh... And we can't forget George and Alice. I'll go and invite them. See you later. Bye. Bye, Mitzi. That's very kind of you, Archie. Thanks. I'd love to come. How about you, Josie? Oh, yes, please. I love pumpkin pie. <laughs> uh, there you go. There you go. Ooh. <laughs> Jack, here's the word. C five O fum. Hey, oh. everybody! <laughs> Come on, we have to get ready. We're having a party. Josie and Alice are coming, and Sammy and George. Well, what was that about a party, Mitzi? I just saw Archie, and he says his pumpkin is huge. So he's going to make more pie. Looks like this is going to be quite a feast. Mm, more people than we thought. More people than Archie thought too, I expect. Do you think he might like a hand, Frank? I think he might, Buster. And after all, we are here to help. Stand by. Standing Standing by. by. Shocks away, Buster. Shocks away, Frank. Get the gate, then. I'm getting the gate, Frank. Buckle up, Buster. Buckle up. Whee!
Oh, I'm really hungry. I can't wait to... Hey, Buster, can you hear something? Come along, old chap. It's Archie. But who's he talking to? Please cry. Grow, little pumpkin. Please grow. <coughs> oh, uh, hello, chaps. Well, Archie, let's see this enormous pumpkin of yours, then. Well, um, Archie, is something wrong? Oh. <laughs> That's a nice little fella, Archie. Where's the big one? Uh, that is the big one. Um, in fact, it's the only one. But you said it was huge. I know. Um, I got carried away. Ah, I feel awful. I told all my friends I'd make them a huge supper. I don't want to let everyone down. What can I do? Oh, oh don't worry, Archie. We'll help you think of something. Yes, but everyone's going to arrive soon, and I won't have enough pie. It's all right, Archie. They'll understand. Ooh, if only I had another pumpkin. Ned! Come on, Archie. There's no time to lose. Hello. What's going on? Ned, would you like to help make the pumpkin pie? Oh, yes. Just one thing. We're expecting more people than we thought, and we're a little short of pumpkin. Oh, dear. That's all right. We can use Molly. Oh, thank you, Mr Ned. Isn't that a great pumpkin, Buster? Yep, that's a whopper. I'm really hungry. Yeah, me too. Me oh, too. I'll have a tea. Pie. Ta -da. Well done, you two. Now. So with a little help from his friends, Archie right. was able to keep his promise and serve a lovely pumpkin pie. It's scrumptious. <laughs> and he learnt never to exaggerate. Uh, <laughs> Would anyone like seconds? Maybe. Oh, yes. Are you sure there's enough? Well, there's plenty of pumpkin pie for everyone. Yay. There's enough. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Once every year, Lolly the emu did something really special. She turned her ice cream van into a little theatre and put on a special puppet show for all her outback friends. In Lolly's puppet shows, Lolly did all the voices herself. Oh, I wish I could go to the prince's party. You can't go, Cinderella. You must clean these filthy floors until I can see me beautiful face in them. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at the homestead, everyone was getting excited about the puppet show. Hi, Mitzi. Hi, Frank. Hi, Buster. Hi, Hi Ned. Ned. Today's the day. Lolly's puppet show day. I know. It's so exciting. Which story do you think she'll do this year? Rumpelstiltskin? Snow White? Mitzi and Ned knew them all by heart. Send out invitations to every house. Tell them I'm holding a huge party. You can't go, Cinderella. You must clean these filthy floors. Until I can see my beautiful face in them. <laughs> Later, in town, Lolly was having a busy day. Oh, you can tell me, Lolly. I won't tell a soul. Cross my heart. Sorry, George, but you know who I never give away which puppet show I'm doing. Oh. Don't forget Lolly's puppet oh. show oh. tonight after tea at the Waterhole. Hello, Miss Lolly. Uh, won't you give us a tiny clue what show you're doing? Sorry, Archie. You'll just have to see tonight. No. Don't forget Lolly's puppet show tonight after tea at the Waterhole. <laughs> Um, is everything all right, Miss Lolly? 
Oh, it's uh, uh, n nothing, Archie. Uh, I'll be fine. Busy day. That's all. I think I'd better give him a throat a rest, though. Mm. Yes, of course. Uh, you don't want to lose your voice for tonight, do you? Hmm. Lolly began to worry. What if she did lose her voice? Hi, Hi Ned, Missy. Missy. Hi, Frank. Hi, Buster. What are you doing? We're just going into Alice's cafe. She's made everyone some cakes for the puppet show, and we said we'd pick them up. OK, so, uh, do you know what time it is? <laughs> it's about a minute after the last time you asked us, Mitzi. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Frank. We just can't wait for it to be puppet show time. <laughs> hey, Ned, would you like to come and help with the takeoff? Sure, Frank. Come on then. See you later, Mitzi. Shocks away, Buster. Shocks away, Frank. Get the gate, Ned. I'm getting the gate, Frank. Buckle up, Buster. Buckled up. Matter, Josie? Is there a problem? I don't know. Lolly won't tell us. Don't worry, Josie. Whatever the problem is, I'm sure Frank can come up with a solution. Why don't you take us to Lolly, Josie, and we'll see what we can do. Frank and Buster soon found out what the trouble was. Uh, oh. <sighs> mm, sore throat, eh? You know, I've heard that a nice hot drink of lemon and honey often makes a sore throat better. Could you make one for Lolly, Alice? Of course I can, Frank. Well? Do you feel any better, Lolly? <coughs> now, don't worry, Lolly. I'm sure Frank has other ideas. Well, uh, another thing I've heard is good for sore throats is ice cream. Yeah. Oh, good idea, Frank. Yeah. That's right, Lolly. Ice cream. Just like you've got right there. <coughs> Lolly tried every flavour of ice cream she had. Right, let's see if that helped. Yes, go on, Miss Lolly. You can do it, Lolly. <coughs> oh. oh, there must be something else, Frank. There's only one other cure I know. Huh? Come on, Frank. Oh, tell us, Frank. Maybe I'll have it in the shop. Sorry, Sammy. The only other cure for a lost voice that I know of is to rest it for a few days. A few days? Does that mean no puppet show? <gasps> I'm afraid so. Until Lolly's throat gets better. But everyone's been looking forward to it, Frank. What can we do, Alice? If Lolly can't do the voices, well, the puppet show wouldn't work anyway. No one else even knows the stories. Wait a minute. You've just given me an idea. Uh, Lolly, how would you feel if... Mm, that's great. Why don't you drive your van to the homestead? We'll meet you there. Come on, Buster. Frank realised that if Lolly couldn't do the voices for the puppet show, someone else would have to. <laughs> and he knew just who could do them. Hi, Lolly. Sorry to hear about your sore throat. Frank and Buster just told us. Oh, does this mean there won't be a puppet show? Don't worry, Ned. Frank's got a plan. You see, you two might be able to help Lolly out. Help? Us? How? You seem to know the stories really well. We thought that if Lolly worked the puppets, you two might be able to fill in the voices. That's right. But wouldn't you mind, Lolly? It's your special show. Why don't you show Lolly what you showed us earlier? Then she can decide. Ah, uh, OK. <coughs> it's an invitation to a party. Oh, a party. I do so love a party. So, what do you think? Are we all right? Um, Frank? 
Later, at the waterhole, Buster explained for this show, Lolly would have two special helpers. Wow. Oh. Lolly's annual puppet theatre proudly presents... Cinderella! Cinderella. There was once a beautiful girl called Cinderella. She lived Mitzi and Ned worked house. really hard helping Lolly to perform her puppet show. They knew the story so well that whenever a new character came on, they knew exactly what to say. I'm your fairy godmother, Cinderella, and you will go to the prince's party. Hooray! And when the puppet show had finished, and they lived happily ever after. Oh, well done, you two. Was it all right? Really? It was better than all right, Ned. It was terrific. Do you think Wally was pleased with what we did? I think so. Thank you. Ah, oh, you're welcome, Lolly. We had a great time. So thanks to the Koala Brothers, Lolly's annual puppet show was a great success. And Lolly learned that if you turn to your friends for help, things usually work out OK in the end. It all started one beautiful outback day when Alice popped over to Sammy's store to do her shopping. Morning, Sammy. Juicy. Oh, good day there. Hello, Alice. Uh, you'll have to excuse the mess, Alice. We're, we're having a bit of a clear out. Mmm, I can see that. Ooh, what's this? Ooh. That? Oh, that's an old movie camera. Do you think it still works? Well, give it a try. You wind it up with that handle there, and then press that button there. It does work. Well, what do you know? Hmm. Could I have this, Sammy? If you think you can make use of it, Alice, it's yours. Oh, thanks. What are you going to film, Alice? Well, I... you know how I forget things sometimes. Maybe I could... well, I could film things. I could film you and Sammy and all my friends, then watch the film later, then I'd never forget. Mm, that's a great idea, Alice, but uh, you'll need... Ah, um... oh, here it is. There's film in there. You have to put it in the camera for it to work. Oh, thank you, Sammy. Shall I start by filming you two? Uh, oh, could you film us later? when we've got the place a bit tidier. OK, then. Bye, Sammy. Bye, Josie. Bye. Good luck. Uh, did you want any shopping, Alice? Oh, I don't think so. I don't remember now. <laughs> well, just be sure and remember to put that film in the camera, won't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, of course. I wouldn't forget that. So Alice set off. She was very excited. She was going to make a movie with all her friends in it. So, you said you want to film me watering flowers. Uh, yes. You just water the flowers like you always do. OK, got it. Alice wanted all her friends to just be themselves. Hello, my lovely flowers. Are you thirsty? Here, let me give you a drink. Mitzi? Stop! What's the matter? I've seen you water your plants, Mitzi. You don't do all that stuff. You just water the plants. OK, if that's what you really want. Hey, when you've finished your film, you could show it here. I'm sure Frank and Buster wouldn't mind. We could invite everyone to come and see it. Well, I'm not sure. OK, start again. Mitzi, that's lovely. Remember, Ned, just the way you do it if I weren't here. Just the way I do it. OK. It's OK, Ned. You can start any time. 
any time, Ned. I... I can't remember how I do this. Just try, please, Ned. I think I do this. Alice filmed Frank and Buster too. That's it. Pretend I'm not here. No problem, Alice. <laughs> but even they got a bit nervous when the camera was on them. Uh, uh, could we do that bit again? Mitsu told us about your plan to show the film here tonight. Well, it wasn't exactly my plan. We think it's a great idea. Hi, everybody. Uh, what's a great idea? Alice is making a film of us all, George. She's going to show it here tonight. We're going to set up a screen and make some food. We'll make a real occasion of it. That sounds great. Uh, great. Yes. Hey, Alice, why don't you film George giving us our mail? Um, all right. Ready, George? Oh, uh, uh, uh sure, but, uh, I guess. Uh, here is your letters. Uh, no, um, <clears throat> Here's your fella's mail. I mean, your mail, fellas. Oh, dear. Don't worry, George. Just try it again. Alice was busy for the rest of the day, filming her friends. <laughs> That's lovely, Archie. Very good. Here's your shopping, Archie. Oh, oh! Sorry. Oh, don't worry, Sammy. You, um, carry on and deliver Archie's groceries while I film it. Yes. <laughs> this is all terribly exciting. <laughs> I am going to be in an actual film. <laughs> Just as long as Alice remembered to put the film I gave her into the camera. <laughs> You did remember that, didn't you, Alice? Of course I did. Um, at least, I'm almost certain I must have put it... Uh, excuse me. Oh, no! Poor Alice was upset because she'd forgotten something again. Are you all right, Alice? Alice? Oh, dear. A little later, Frank and Buster were out on their daily patrol, looking for anyone who might need their help. Hey, look, Frank! It's Alice! Hi, Alice. Are you all right? Well, not really. It's just... it's just I'm always forgetting things. And now I've forgotten to put film in the camera. Everyone's looking forward to seeing a film tonight, and there's going to be no film. Oh, it's a bit of bad luck about forgetting the film, Alice, but I'm sure we can think of a way to make things better, can't we, Frank? Of course. After all, we're, we're here, here to help. Now, to begin with, let's get some film into this camera. But it's too late, Frank. Ah, it's all right, Alice. Just film everything again. I'm sure people won't mind. Do you think we can do it? Sure we can. So Alice okay. went back and filmed everything she'd filmed before. Bye! It was easier this time and everyone knew exactly what to do. Before long, Alice had filmed all her friends again. That night, all of Alice's friends gathered to watch her film. She'd worked very hard. Now she was just hoping that Sammy would have it developed in time. Here's your film, Alice. Look, Mitsu, that's you. Yeah. 
Oh, oh, here's our starring role, Mr. George. Oh, oh gosh, I'm really glad I did Three cheers for Alice. Hip hip, hooray! Hip hip, hooray! Hip hip, hooray! Alice was very happy. This was one time she'd never forget because she had it all on film. And Alice realised that no matter what goes wrong, it can usually be put right with a little bit of help from your friends and maybe a little bit of film in the camera. You might be wondering why one day a little crocodile was sitting in the middle of nowhere playing a ukulele. Well, I can tell you. He was the Koala Brothers' new neighbour and he was waiting for Frank to come and pick him up in the plane. Back at the homestead, Frank was getting ready to fly out. Stand by. Standing, Standing by. Chocks away, Buster. Chocks away, Frank. Get the gate, Ned. I'm getting the gate, Frank. While Frank was collecting their new neighbour, Buster and Ned had another job to do. A job that made them both a little worried. What are you two doing? Frank says we've got to go and clean the house by the waterhole. What? The scary house? The one with the creaky door? No one ever goes there. I bet you're too scared to go there. We're not scared, are we, Ned? N no. The old house by the waterhole had stood empty for a long time. Do I have to come with you? Well, I'm not going in there on my own, Ned. Frank said we have to get it ready for our new neighbour. Even the door made a scary squeaky noise. There's no way I'm going anywhere near that place. <laughs> Wait for me! <laughs> it wasn't long before Frank returned with their new neighbour. I'm going to like it here. <laughs> Buster! Hello! Come and meet our new friend. Ah, Mr. Buster. Nice to meet you. The name's Archibald P. Crocodilus, but you can call me Archie. I'm looking forward to making lots of new friends. Come on, Buster. Let's help Archie take his things down to the waterhole. Buster and Ned have cleaned up the house by the waterhole for you. Haven't you, Buster? Uh... Buster didn't really want to admit that they were too scared of Archie's house to do the cleaning. And no one was more scared than Ned. Ah, this place looks lovely. I can't wait to meet everyone. I love having visitors and making new friends. Oops. You did clean the house. <gasps> ah, ah, ah. What a funny noise. Funny? Most people think that sounds scary. Oh, no. I don't. <laughs> I think it's funny. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> 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 like uh, funny, squeaky music. Ah, I love it. 
At least Archie was happy in his new home. The next morning, Alice came out to the waterhole. She'd never liked passing the scary house. Ah! Hello? Days. Give it time. We'll do. <laughs> oh, come on, Ned. Come out and meet Archie. I'm not coming out. Anyone who lives in a scary house has got to be scary, too. Still no visitors. Do you think I'll get to make some new friends soon? I'm sure you will. You know, chaps, I've had an idea. I've decided to invite everyone to a party at my house. That way, I can make lots of new friends. I think that's a very good idea. I'll give you a list of people to invite. So Archie made up some party invitations and posted them in town. Have you got your invitation to the party, George? Uh, uh... What party? The one at the house by the waterhole. Oh, uh, yeah, I, I think I'm uh, busy that day. Uh, 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 gotta go. Uh, see ya. Everyone got their invitations. Oh. Oh. Are you going to go, Josie? Going. No one wants to go to the scary house. Oh. Uh, Frank, when can we eat? I told you, we have to wait until everyone else arrives. Why don't we play some music together? Um, not tonight, if you don't mind. Though Archie put a brave face on it. It was obvious that he was disappointed that hardly anyone had come to his party. I am a nice chap, don't you think? Yes, of course you are, Archie. Definitely. Can we eat? Then why didn't anyone come to my party? Wait a minute. Somebody's coming. Ah! Hello, Ned. I didn't think you were coming. Buster said there'd be balloons and cake. Are there any left? Hello, Mr. Ned. Oh, come in, come in. No! I, I don't like the sound of the scary door. Please don't open it. That's it. I know what the problem is. You do? Everyone thinks this old house is scary. It is, isn't it? Doesn't seem scary to me. That's why nobody's come to your party. They're too scared to come to this creaky old house. Is that true, Ned? Hmm. Hmm. I've got an idea. And so the next day, Frank and Buster and Ned all helped Archie redecorate the old house. And they even oiled the squeaky old door. What do you think, Mr. Ned? I... I like it. Nobody could be scared of this place now. And so the new friends decided to have another party. And this time, everyone came along. <laughs> Thanks to Frank and Buster, the party was a big success. Oh, I was never scared. As soon as I got my invitation, I thought I'd go... And Archie finally did get his wish to make lots of new friends. <laughs> On the day our story began, the little outback town was sleepy and quiet as usual. Mitzi was on her way to Sammy's shop to buy the groceries. Bread, butter, 
cheese, tea, chocolate for Buster, milk. Bread, butter, cheese, tea, chocolate for Buster, milk. Hi, George. Oh. <gasps> oh. Wow. Oh, Mitzi. Want toffee? Not now, Ned. Thanks. Huh? Good day, Mitzi. How are you? Fine. That carousel in the window? Oh, yeah. That's just come in. I'll take it. Look, I've got my pocket money. Oh. Uh, I'm afraid that's not enough, Mitzi. It's 15 for the carousel. 15? I don't have that much, Sammy. Oh, can't I have it anyway? I really want it. Maybe if you saved up enough pocket money, you could afford to buy it. But I want it now. Oh, it's not fair. I'm sorry, Mitzi. Meanwhile, back at the homestead, Frank and Buster were busy cleaning the plane. Mitzi had come home to find out how much money she really had. Hi, Mitzi. Hi, Frank. Hi, Buster. One, two, three, four... Did you get the tea and bread? No. Five... Did you get the chocolate for my cake? No. Mm, I haven't got enough. What am I going to do? Haven't got enough for what, Mitzi? I saw the best thing in Sammy's shop today, the most amazing toy you've ever seen. And I'm going to buy it. But Sammy said I didn't have enough money. I need 15. You know, Mitzi, if you want something badly enough, you could save your money until you had enough to buy it. Or you could earn some extra pocket money by doing some little jobs for people. Like what? I can't mend cars and build houses. Uh, not those kind of jobs, Mitzi. Uh, little jobs like, uh, like, uh... Like cleaning Ned's windows. Hmm, that's a good idea. They could do with a good clean, but who else could I help? Leave it to us. The next morning, Frank and Buster were getting ready to go out on their daily patrol. Mitzi was up bright and early too, ready to do some jobs. Frank! Buster! Stop! Have you got any jobs for me to do? Well, the kitchen floor could do with a sweep, but I've only just swept it. An extra sweep won't hurt, Buster. And if you do a good job, Mitzi, we'll give you a silver coin when we get back from town. Great! Thanks! Okay, stand by for takeoff. Standing, Standing by. Chocks away, Buster. Chocks away, Frank. Get the gate, Ned. I'm getting the gate, Frank. Buckle up, Buster. Buckle down. Butter, cheese, tea. I can't find the chocolate for my cake, Sammy. <sighs> I'm sorry, Buster. It's Josie's day off and things have got into a bit of a mess. You can say that again. Maybe you need some help. What about Mitzi? Ah, oh, great idea. Send her over right away. That's quite a load, George. Ooh. Yes, indeedy, Frank. I could do with a little help today. We know just the person. George wasn't the only one who needed some help. <sighs> Hi, Alice. Are you OK? <sighs> I've just fixed my scooter and now it needs a good clean, but I'm so tired. Maybe you need someone to help clean it for you. 
That'd be nice. But who? Mitzi will do it for you. Mitzi, they're clean now. Not quite, Ned. Frank said I had to do a good job. But you'll wear them out. Hi, Mitzi. Hi, Ned. We've got some good news. Sammy, George and Alice have all got jobs for you to do. And you might get a silver coin in return if you do a good job. Wow. Thanks, Frank. Thanks, Buster. There you go, Ned. See you later. Hey, don't you want this? Mitzi was in such a hurry that she forgot to take the silver coin from Ned for cleaning his windows. First, Mitzi went to Sammy's shop where she worked very hard indeed. That's a job well done, Mitzi. Here you go. Thanks, Sammy. You've earned it. Then Mitzi helped George deliver his parcels. Good job, Mitzi. There you go. Thanks. And finally, Mitzi helped Alice by cleaning her scooter. Alice thought Mitzi had done a very good job. Thanks, Alice. Back at the homestead, Buster and Ned were waiting for Buster's chocolate cake to finish baking. Is it ready yet? Nearly. Hi, Hi Missy! Hi. How did it go? Well, I helped Ned, then I helped Sammy, then I helped George and Alice, and now I'm B. Is it ready now? Ah, it's done. So, Six. did you get enough of the carousel? Seven. Eight. Nine. I can't believe it. After all that hard work, I still haven't got enough money. <sighs> How am I ever going to get enough money to buy my beautiful carousel? A piece of chocolate cake will make you feel better. Hey, Buster. Maybe Mitzi could sell slices of cake in town. Great idea, Frank. But I haven't got a cake to sell. Oh, yes, you have. You can have this one. That is, if Ned doesn't mind. Oh. It'd make Mitzi happy if you could. Oh. OK, then. Gee, thanks, Ned. You're a real mate. And for that, you're going to get the first piece. Oh. Mitzi set up a stall in town. Can I have a napkin with that, Mitzi? You sure can. It'll be extra. Everybody wanted to buy a slice of the delicious chocolate cake. Before long, Mitzi's money box was full up to the top. The moment had come. Oh, I can't believe it. I'm still short of one coin. Will this one help, Mitzi? It's for cleaning my windows. Oh, wow! Thanks, Ned. Thanks a lot. You're a real mate. <laughs> She's been in there a very long time. Oh, I hope she's got enough money. I'm sure she has. Shh! Here she comes. <laughs> Look! I got it! Anyone want to go? Yay! Yay! Mitzi had worked very hard to get the carousel. <laughs> but the best bit was when she got to share it with all her friends. One day, Mitzi was looking at the outback. She often wondered what the rest of the world looked like, the places she couldn't see. Wow! <laughs> Mitzi, are you OK? Uh, sure, George. You gave me quite a surprise. What were you looking at? Oh, uh, I was just trying to see what the rest of the world looks like. All I can see is the outback. Being a postman, I get to see quite a lot of the world. Really? Well, on postcards anyway. Will you look at that? That is the seaside. Wow! Mitzi couldn't stop thinking about the postcard George had shown her. It looked so beautiful, so different from what she was used to looking at every day. Morning, Mitzi. Would you like to join us for breakfast? Oh, morning, Buster. No, thanks. I'll just sit here for a while. Mm. Buster had a feeling something was wrong. Mitzi had never refused breakfast before. 
<gasps> Is there something the matter, Mitzi? Oh, I don't know. I really like it here. You know, the homestead, the waterhole and everything. But I'd just like to see something different for a change. Something less... flat. Sounds like you need a holiday, Mitzi. Do you think? Buster's right. Everyone needs to get away from it all sometimes. But how can I go on holiday? Easy. I'll take you in the plane. We could go to the seaside for a couple of days. The seaside? Sure. And I can help you pack if you'd like. That's really great. Thanks. <laughs> no problem. We're here to help. Packing wasn't a problem for Mitzi, but Buster was getting more than a little worried. You don't think you're overdoing the packing, do you, Mitzi? You're only going on holiday for a couple of days. But it's all my favourite stuff, Buster. I might need it. Hi, Mitzi. Hi, Buster. Hi, Ned. Hello, Ned. Oh. What are you doing? I'm just helping Mitzi with her packing. You're not leaving us, are you, Mitzi? No. <laughs> I'm going on holiday. Pink or blue, what do you think? Um, blue? Pink. You're right. I'll take them both, just to be on the safe side. Oh. oh. <sighs> What's taking them so long? <sighs> oh, hang on. Here's Buster. Ooh, uh. that looks heavy. Ooh. It is. I think I'm going to need a hand getting it in the plane. Where's Mitzi? Huh? She's still packing. You did remind Mitzi she was only going on holiday for a couple of days, didn't you, Buster? Yeah. She's just taking what she thinks is important. Frank and Buster soon discovered that everything Mitzi owned was important. She wanted to see the world, but she wanted to take her world with her too. Why do you need to take your bed, Mitzi? It's so comfy. There's no way I could go on holiday without my bed. Right. So Mitzi finally finished her packing and the plane was loaded. There was just one problem. So how are you and Mitzi going to get in the plane then, Frank? Do you think we might be a bit overloaded, Frank? Hi, Sammy. Day all. Hi, Hi Sammy. Sammy. We weren't expecting a delivery today. Oh, this isn't for you. <laughs> it's for Mitzi. Ah, your plane looks a bit overloaded. I hope you've left room for this little lot. Oh! Cooey! I nearly forgot the kettle. I couldn't do without my morning cup of tea. Hi, Sammy. The Billy Beans! Beaut! I thought I'd take a few cans with me in case they don't have them where we're going. That looks like more than a few cans, Mitzi. They all knew something had to be done. <laughs> Mitzi needed to leave some of her stuff behind. Mitzi, do you think you might be taking too much stuff? But I need it all. There isn't any room for us, though, Mitzi. Oh, well, I suppose I could try and leave one or two things behind. Are you sure you need to take this? Well, you know I like to keep things clean, Frank. Right. I can see why you want to take this with you, Mitzi. It really is comfy. Wee what about this painting, Mitzi? I couldn't leave my painting behind, Buster. I really love it. <sighs> the more Mitzi thought about leaving her things behind, the more she began to miss them. <sighs> Mitzi was getting homesick. There must be something you can leave behind, Mitzi. Frank. Look. <sighs> What's up, Mitzi? Oh, I don't know. It's just the more I think about going on holiday, the more I think about home. I'm really going to miss it. I love it here at the homestead. It might be flat, but it's my home. Do you know what I mean? So, you don't want to go on holiday anymore? Yes, I do. It's just I really miss this place. What about if we just go on a trip in the plane? Good idea, Frank. You could show Mitzi all her favourite places from here. 
what? Like the homestead and the water hole? Yeah, things really look different from up there. And you'll be back by supper time. Really? Oh, yeah, let's do it. Let's go on a trip. So Mitzi set off on her trip over the outback. She didn't need to take much, just her camera for taking photographs and her kettle just in case. Chocks away, Buster! Chocks away, Frank! Get the gate, Ned! I'm getting the gate, Frank! Nice trip! What am I gonna do with all these Billy Beans? You could feed the whole town with that lot. You certainly could. Wow! Frank and Buster were right. The outback did look different from the sky. Mitzi realised what a wonderful place her home really was. Boxes. Did you enjoy your trip? Wow! I had the best time ever! Mitzi was really glad to be back home with all her friends, especially as they'd organised a welcome home barbie for her. <laughs> Sausages with lots and lots of beans. What was it like? Uh, what did you see? Oh, it was... it was beautiful, George. I took some photos for you. Oh... Thanks, Mitzi. <laughs> Seeing all her favourite places from the air made Mitzi look at the outback in a different way. Being up there in the sky made her realise that there really is no place like home. Trouble and you need some 